On Tuesday, President Biden addressed the nation, defending his decision to withdraw the U.S. military from Afghanistan. I was not going to extend this forever war. And I was not extending a forever exit. The decision to end the military lift operations at Kabul airport was based on the unanimous recommendation of my civilian and military advisors, the Secretary of State, the Secretary of Defense, the Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, and all the service chiefs, and the commanders in the field. The removal could cause a shift in U.S. foreign relations. As the Wall Street Journal notes, a Chinese foreign ministry spokeswoman said in a briefing, quote, American myth down, more and more people are awakening. Russia's initial response to the Taliban's resurgence seemed to celebrate the U.S.'s departure and the defeat of the American-backed and trained Afghan government. Russia ambassador to Kabul, Dmitry Zirnov, even praised the Taliban's conduct, though now Russia's tone seems to have tempered. And according to the UN's nuclear watchdog, the International Atomic Energy Agency, the North Korean government has reactivated a nuclear reactor capable of producing kilograms of weapons-grade plutonium per year. The reactor's restoration, along with the critical takes from our foreign enemies, comes as the U.S.'s chaotic withdrawal from Afghanistan makes headlines around the world. We have new Hill Harris X data on whether or not the withdrawal from Afghanistan has helped or harmed America's credibility. Let's take a look. The poll, which was conducted in mid-August, found that half of voters said the withdrawal has harmed America's credibility. 36% said it makes no difference, while 14% said it has helped. Alyssa, what do you think of that? Do you think this has helped, harmed, or no difference? I think it's certainly harmed the U.S.'s credibility. I would look more to the criticism of America's allies than I would our adversaries. Look, our adversaries, the Chinese, the Russians, are always going to look for moments of American weakness to exploit and to try to, you know, take advantage of. It's our allies that I'm looking to. I mean, we were, uh, uh, Prime Minister Boris Johnson made remarks that were very pointed at Joe Biden for the way that the exit took place. Um, we had members of parliament condemn the actions of the U.S. and how we handled the withdrawal and even the French critiquing us um, from the perspective of NATO. So I, I think it certainly hurts the U.S.'s credibility, but I'm much more interested in what our allies think of us than what our adversaries do, who always take advantage of these moments. I don't know. I thought it kind of exposed our allies as a pitiful bunch of free riders. I mean, what, what did you think, Kim? <laughs> Yeah, you know, it, it is really interesting. Um, I'm, I'm interested in this 14% from this poll that actually say it helped. And I'm trying to kind of wrap my mind around what they might be thinking. And part of me wonders if they're thinking, look, um, now maybe we'll be able to make a shift in foreign policy. Maybe this is going to help us because now maybe the rest of the world won't view us as warmongery anymore because we're trying to end wars. You know, possibly that is uh, maybe a benefit in the on the world stage, potentially. Yeah, yeah, pe yeah people who don't want us, you know, occupying countries around the world would, would see us occupying one fewer country as a positive thing. Right. Yeah, and in 2019, Kim Jong-un offered to shut down the plant where the key reactor is held in an attempted negotiation with President Trump. In exchange, Kim asked that the U.S. relax sanctions directed at North Korean nuclear and ballistic missile programs, though Trump did not accept the deal. On Monday, President Biden's special envoy for North Korea said he's ready to meet with his North Korean counterparts anywhere and at any time as he held discussions with South Korean officials over stalled nuclear talks with the North. 
So just real quick, this was interesting to me, and it kind of flew under the radar in light of all the Afghanistan news. Um, but many, many Democrats were extremely critical of President Trump for even being willing to speak with and meet with and negotiate with the North Koreans. And it now sounds like the Biden administration is willing to do the same without pre uh, without preconditions. Yeah, isn't that interesting? I mean, isn't it interesting that, you know, uh, Biden has largely continued Trump's foreign policy. And, you know, Trump was saying, I want to get out of Afghanistan. Biden actually does it. Uh, Trump meets with North Korean leader Kim Jong-un. And now Biden is saying, me too. You know, I will too. And I, I think that this is ultimately healthy. So I, I like this. I like that they're wanting to sit down with them. I was always a big fan of that. I'm a big fan of diplomacy, no matter what, even with our enemies, you got to sit down with them. You got to talk to them. It's better than war. So I'm hoping that Biden follows through with this. But I don't know if um, if Kim Jong Un is interested. But Biden himself hasn't said he would sit down, right? Just, no, just administration representatives. The one thing I, I would note is this, is I'm kind of seeing- They're in a, charge. Yeah, I'm see, <laughs> seeing um, a bit of a trend of maybe what I would call a bit of fear mongering in the, the Afghanistan aftermath where there's, look to North Korea, this is happening. Look to Taiwan, this is happening. The Chinese are doing you know, a freedom of navigation ex exercise. So I would caution everyone to not get pulled into this, this notion that every bad thing that's happening is because of America's declining role in the world and we need to be on high alert everywhere. A lot of this is kind of pro forma. We go through an iteration of this every few months or so with the North Koreans. They, you know, pop off or do a demonstration somewhere. It sends off, you know, a firestorm in the U.S. But we haven't seen a, you know, broad capability to do anything that threatens the homeland um, in years. So I would just say, you know, monitor it. But I don't want us to be overly worried about some of these reports. All right. It does feel like uh, the news cycle is due for uh, a North Korea turn. <laughs> he, he yeah. Likes to, well, he well likes they've to already pop up Afghanistan's already yeah. out of the headlines, so they've got to move on to the next thing. <laughs> exactly. But so thanks everybody for watching. What America's thinking. We'll see you next time.